Hello and welcome to another Janome Live. Today I'm in the Janome Sewing Studio and I am Alba. Today we're going to be talking about binding a quilt, especially binding a quilt completely by machine. I am going to be working on the Memory Craft 14,000, but this can be done on any of the Janome machines. I will be working with the AccuFeed system, which is the built-in walking foot. I highly recommend that if you're putting binding on your quilt, to use at the very least a walking foot. And I will be going over just the different techniques and different tips and tricks for getting the best results possible. Janome. As I said, today we will be talking about binding a quilt. And there are a few slight differences with binding a quilt completely on the machine versus sewing your binding on and then finishing it by hand with a hand sewing needle. I don't like doing um, hand sewing. Hand to me is a four letter word. Um, it's just very uncomfortable and I just have an issue holding that hand needle and going through all of those layers. The major difference with completing your binding by machine versus by hand is how you sew your binding on. So I'm gonna be working with a mini quilt, this little quilt block, and my printed fabric is what would represent my front of the quilt or my pieced quilt and my backing is the black. So the first major difference is that normally you're sewing your binding onto the front and flipping it to the back side. When we're doing our binding by machine, it's just the opposite. I want to sew on the back side, flip to the front, because I want to see where my decorative stitching is going. But before we get started with adding and sewing that binding, let's talk about the binding. I have some strips cut at two and a half inches, and I get asked often, do I sew my binding together on a straight or with a diagonal? I never seem to get that right. So I'm going to show you a few tricks throughout this whole process. Your iron will be your best friend when binding. So I want to make sure that everything is pressed smoothly flat. And I often like to give my fabric just a light, spray of spray starch to give it a little bit of crispness. So when I am sewing my binding, I like my seams to be on a diagonal. This gives me the least amount of bulk. And I know um, many, many times when I've sewn my seam on the diagonal, if you sew it in the wrong direction, it's wrong and you have to unstitch it. And this is how I have found the easiest way for me to remember how to sew this. So when I overlap my fabrics, I do an overlap mostly because I didn't trim off my selvage. If you did trim off your selvage, you can leave that nice and even, but I want one going in one direction and one going in another so that they form a V. And I think of these ends that are coming off the sides as pant legs. So if this is my pant leg and this is my pant leg, I want to draw my waistband. So I am going from one intersection to another. And if you could eyeball this and do this without a drawn line, perfect. I have not pinned this. You may want to pin this. But now where I have this, and if you look at it, here are my pant legs. Here's my waistband. I am going to sew on that drawn line. I am going to bring this to the machine 
And because I am drawing on that open line, I am going to attach my open toe foot. So I am going to lock my machine so that when I lift, I am at extra high lift. And look at how much easier that is to put that foot on there. So the reason I'm switching to that open toe is so that I could see my line and I'm bringing that so that my line is right where my needle is. And right now I'm on a straight stitch with a stitch length of 2.4. And I am going to sew right on that line and I'm going to cut. What that will do is when I open that up, it's beautifully straight and it is going to give me the least amount of bulk possible. Now, in a perfect world, I would trim this up on my mat, carefully giving me a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And I know to, um, to do this, I would be adding one more, but I'm just going to put that aside. Now, with my put together strips, and these are cut on the straight, and I used a stripe so that you would see that that is on the straight of grain. For binding, I like to press my seams open, and I am just going to open that up and press that. This also gives me the least amount of bulk as I am sewing. And again, I'm just going to open that seam up. Now I've used contrasting thread here so that you could see what I am doing. You'll notice that I am using steam. I do have water in my iron. And this relaxes the fibers of my binding in the fabric. So I am pressing this so that I am folding it in half. And now you'll see that where my seam is, that just has no bulk. It lays perfectly flat. And ironing is a very important part of doing binding on a quilt. I am going to show you, I do not pin when I put my binding on because I press so heavily and use my iron and my steam that it holds my fabric in place. Now, as I said, we're going to be sewing that binding onto the wrong side of the quilt. And on a real quilt, I like to leave at least a 10 inch opening. I'm working with a 15 inch square here, so it's not gonna be quite that big. But I want to give myself a longer of a tail than that 10 inch opening. So I like to have excess fabric I'm lining up my binding with the edge of my quilt. And now I'm going to switch to my quarter inch. And this is the OD attachment. It has that quarter inch guide and I am going to go to my quarter inch stitch on my machine. I like to sew my binding on with a stitch length of 2.4. I do like to use a purple tip needle anytime I am sewing through batting. And what I am going to do is I'm just going to loosely leave my binding on my lap. And I am going to bring that quilt sandwich and binding right up to the machine. I am leaving a nice wide opening on a quilt, a regular size quilt, I like to leave 10 or more inches open so that when I join the ends, it makes it a little bit easier. 
I do prefer doing this with a walking foot. This is the AccuFeed foot. If your walking foot does not have that quarter inch guide on it, make sure that you're using your seam guide that goes with your machine. And I am going to sew and I want to stop a quarter of an inch from the edge of my fabric. So I'm using the guide on my foot to tell me when to stop. And I am going to raise that foot and I'm actually gonna cut my thread. Now I went a stitch or two too much so I'm actually going to unstitch a stitch or two. You were better off having a stitch fewer than going too much. Now, when I turn the corner, and I'm gonna do this off the machine so that you could see that, I am going to turn the bulk of my fabric up, giving me a 45 degree crease right to my corner and then I am going to go back so that I am lined up nice and flush with the edge of my quilt and I'm going to bring that to my sewing machine and I am going to sew to that next corner and if you didn't catch that I will do that one more time And again, I want to stop. Now, I don't pin, so I stop along the way and just line up my fabric. And I'm going to, I'm using the stop star feature. So as I come close to the edge, when I press and hold, it will slow down that machine. and I have a guide on my foot that will allow me to stop exactly a quarter of an inch from the edge. And I'm going to cut that thread. And again, I am going to flip that fabric up, lining it up with the corner so I have a nice 45 degree angle, and then I'm gonna come back down lining up the edges of my binding and my quilt and I am going to sew. By flipping my corners like that, that will give me a beautifully mitered corner when I complete my binding. And I'm gonna do the next two rather quickly. Again, using that slow stop start function. And so. Now, you never want to start or stop a quilt directly at a corner. Um, you just will get a lot of bulk and it will not end and give you that really nice corner. So you always want to start in the middle of a quilt never right at the corner. And you caught me, I didn't have enough to go to that next corner. So always measure and make sure that you have more than enough binding. And I'm going to go to that next corner. And now what I'm going to show you is how to join or finish up those edges. What I like about using that walking foot is that it keeps all of the layers 
just beautifully together. Nothing shifts, nothing pulls. And you really want to make sure that when you're doing binding, that you've lined everything up and made everything beautifully square. Now I'm going to that next corner and this is where I'm leaving my opening. So I have an opening here. It is not 10 inches because I only have a 15 inch um, item that I am quilting. But I am going to get one of my flaps and I'm gonna bring it to the center and I am going to cut. I'm going to overlap my next piece on top of that. And what I want to do with the piece that I cut off, I want to open it. My overlap needs to be the same width that my binding is. So if you look at this, I opened it up and I'm actually going to put the stripe side so that you could see the direction that my fabric is going in. So I want to cut that overlap the same amount that my fabric is wide. So here's my fabric, here's my overlap. Now, when you go to join these, you want to make sure never to twist your fabric. And I want to turn this so that you could see this as if you were looking at it. So here is my fabric on the top, here is my fabric on the top, and I am opening this up so they're both in the same direction. And what I want to do now is overlap them just like I did. And I'm going to open that up a bit more. Now you see why it's very helpful to have that opening. So now what I have are those pant legs like I did in the beginning. So you always want to sew if these are my pant legs hanging down, I want to sew across the waistband. So I'm drawing my line. My legs are in a V. If they were a pair of pants, I'm drawing in that waistline. And that drawn line is what I am going to follow to stitch. So. I am just going to fold this over and I'm actually going to use my crease line. So where I am sewing is right on the crease line. My pant legs or my bulk of the fabric always wants to be on the left hand side of the machine. If I put it any place else, it's really easy to get disoriented and not get that completely straight. And I'm going to sew on that crease line or drawn line that would be the waistband. So this is really my big trick with putting binding together and closing it back up. Now, when I close that, look at how perfect. There is no excess there. Now, I before I cut, I always double check that it's fitting nicely and that it's laying flat. And I want to press that seam on a big quilt where I have a lot more room. I like to press open. And I am going to press that down. And now all I need to do is sew that line going across. And it just always works out. It's always just the right size. What you want to do is you do not want to push, pull. You do not want to force your fabric into the machine or through the machine. You really want to let the machine do the work. Now we're almost done. And I had said that iron is really important. And I want to press this 
completely flat, paying close attention to my corners. You'll notice on that back side, I have a beautiful miter and I want to press this flat and then I'm going to press it to the right side. So ironing is really important because that's going to keep my fabric in place. Now at the corners, it's going to want to curl up and I'm going to show that to you and that's perfectly fine. That's part of that mitered corner. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna poke that to the opposite side and we're gonna fold to the front. And I have a couple of pieces that just curled up on me. Now with my fabric, I want to just barely cover my stitching line that I did from the back side. And I am going to press. And when I get to that mitered corner, I'm gonna press and lift that up to show you how beautiful of a corner that is. Look at that perfectly matched up and because this is pressed and my fabric is lightly starched it's staying in place where I don't need to put a million pins so if my fabric just I give it the room to uh, move and to really uh, allow that movement now, I'm removing my quarter inch foot off of my AccuFeed, and I'm going to put that on top so I don't lose it. And I like to use an open toe when I'm using decorative stitches. And this is the UD attachment for the AccuFeed. If you do not have AccuFeed on your machine, uh, you might want to consider getting the convertible walking foot which gives you the open toe and the standard, and that will allow you to switch the bottoms out in a very similar way that I am doing. And I'm gonna move my iron around, and I like to start, I am going to be using a blanket stitch or something that looks like a blanket stitch. This one in particular looks like a ruler, and I really like this one. And I am just making it the width, the length that I like. I like a longer stitch length, um, especially when I'm going through all of these layers and all of the fabric. So my stitch length is between a 4.5 and a 5. Now, when I line this up, I want my needle to go just to the outside of that folded edge. And I'm going to lower, and I am going to sew doing that. And I just want to press two corners so that I could show you how I go around a corner. Because I know that gets asked a lot. And again, when I fold that over, it's just a beautiful corner that miters beautifully. I'm gonna put that under the foot. Again, lining up that needle with that outer edge of the fabric. And I am going to sew. Now I do this a lot, so I'm, I'm comfortable going at a fast speed, but you may wanna slow that down so that you could really see your needle drop. And I wanna make sure that that folded edge of the fabric is covering my stitch line where I attached my binding. And because I did not pin, 
I tend to sew several inches and stop and check the positioning of my fabric and adjust if I need to. When I am approaching that corner, I'm just clipping any thread that I need to, I make sure to hold that miter down with my fingers and I am going to approach the corner. And I am going to stop that needle as close to that corner as I can. And I am going to pivot and turn. So I've used very contrasting fabrics, very contrasting threads, but you will see, I really like that decorative stitch. I know Miriam likes to use a serpentine stitch on her bindings, but this just makes doing that binding nice and easy. You'll see that beautiful mitered corner. And when I turn this around, my stitching is going just slightly past that folded edge, but I want that to really secure my fabric. So this is something that I like to do, especially for a quilt that will be loved and used. I know that I could put this in the washer, in the dryer. Uh, that child could play in the yard, run around in the mud, run around in the dirt. And I know that with all that love that it will be given, this will hold up to all of that. I'd like to thank you for sharing your time with me and joining me on the Janome Live all about binding a quilt. Please stay tuned and keep an eye out for future lives and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.